All right, we're live. Hey guys, Bonnie here. And today we are doing Casual Friday. And with us today we have Ethan. And why don't you tell the audience what it is that you do? I am the daily challenge designer for the Microsoft Casual Games group. So, so you make all of the daily challenges for all of the games that have daily challenges. Yep. Awesome. Hi, Corey. Oh, is it him? Yeah, that's <laughs> Corey. <laughs> Yay. All right, so today we're going to take a look at, what do you want to start? We want to start with, well, obviously, let's take a look at some daily challenges. Oh, okay. We can do that. Sure. I'll just play some spider. <laughs> oh, well, that works, too. I can pick spider daily challenges. So if you guys have any questions about Solitaire or for Ethan about how he does the daily challenges, please type them in the chat. Um, he's here to answer your guys' questions the best that he can. And yeah, we'll get this rolling with some spider. Oh, it's an easy one. Hold on, I need to find a better one. There's got to be a tough one in here somewhere. So to back it up just a little bit, when you play Solitaire and Jigsaw and Mahjong, Right? Mm -hmm. There's none other that have daily challenges? A spider, Jigsaw, Mahjong, Sudoku, uh, Minesweeper. Okay. So when you play every day, there are three... What, how many does Solitaire have? Solitaire has five. Five. Uh, daily challenges. Up here. So every day you can come in and complete these different challenges, and they're all the way from easy level to expert, really, right? That's as high as it goes? Expert? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and then what you do is when you complete all of them, you get, well, when you complete one out of however many, you get coins. And those coins are added up at the bottom of the screen, you can see. And then as you accumulate coins, you earn medals for how many that you've completed, correct? Mm -hmm. So then if you complete all of them for the day, you get a bonus set of coins. Yeah. That basically if you complete all of them every day, you can pretty much get to like platinum level before, uh, oh, before before the end of the month yeah. yeah yeah so this is an example of november 16th and there are the five daily challenges that you can go in and you can complete and what's really cool is that if you go to our facebook page uh facebook.com for solitaire you can actually there's help posts so you can go on there and if you are having trouble with a certain daily challenge you can get help from the community. And a lot of the community is really cool because they make videos. So if you're having trouble, like with the expert spider here, you can go to the November 16th post and look up and see if, if anyone else needed help or if anyone posted any videos. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and dive into your right. try spider. Sure. We get to watch that. Woo! See, now I'm hungry. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I made Ethan come in here and it's lunchtime. Yes. yes. you can. MSN games now, which means you can pretty much play it on anything. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So is this a timed one or? No, no, no. No, this one's not timed. It's just to suit. I'm so, bad at spider. Uh. <laughs> I'm so bad at spider. <laughs> so do you have any um maybe if someone's new to spider? Sure. Like um, maybe a little tip uh, on how to Sure. Um do solid art to spider? So with, with with single suit spider, it's fairly straightforward. You're just, you know, you're just stacking stuff and getting rid of getting rid of stacks. Right. It's not terribly tough. Um, once you get into two suit and especially four suit, you have to be really careful about what you stack on what. So, um, you know, because I, you can stack on anything. Yeah, well, yeah, you but can. The goal as is long as the numbers match in descending order, you can stack. Right. Um, doesn't matter what suit, but you can only move an entire stack if, if it matches both suit, suit and uh, okay. number. Okay. So. You know, I put I did this over here, uh, right. which is I, I made a waste pile basically, which is just where I put stuff I can't 
catalog until I have a chance to move it around. Okay. Um, and I can't move that whole thing. I can only move the top card because it's alternating uh -huh. suit. So I kind of work myself into a corner there, but as long as you only do it with a stack or two, you're fine. You're trying to keep most of the stacks immovable so that you can be as flexible as possible when you're okay. moving them around. That makes sense. Um, you know, occasionally, oh, <laughs> that's the other thing. Make liberal use of undo. Don't be afraid of it. It's there for a reason. Uh, like, I may not want to have done what I just did, so I'll just control Z and undo that instead of having to go down to the undo button. Um, and, uh, you know, now I was, I'm back to where I was and I could go experiment with something else. Let's you basically look under a card. The, uh, a lot of old school folks think that's cheating, but, uh... The undo? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, my, it's, it's My very grandma useful. would think that was cheating. Because <laughs> she, like, raised me on solitaire and nerds, and anytime we... Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no. We, we got her hand slapped. She was, she was not about the undo. So, yeah, so, um... One of the one of the tricks with Spider when the more suits you have is trying to um, kind of keep yourself from over mixing different stacks and okay. also keep yourself from under mixing. So like if you end up too pure, you're never going to solve anything because there's too you know like I, I might need to get to that king under there and I can't unless I'm willing to do this for a little while. Right. Um, which I'm actually not right now, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, you know, I can get rid of this because I've already got this waste pile over here. You build those two high, and they will come back to bite you. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all the, the strategic placement and, and trying to figure out how to get rid of, how, how to make these long stacks. Um, <laughs> it feels a little elementary to be saying this. I'm sure that people have been played so much, uh, so much spider, but it's... Well, these are going to be uploaded to YouTube, too. So oh. if someone is a beginner then they can go back and you know and we can even clip out that beginner part so yeah. that way if people want beginner help then they can go check it out and that's cool because you helped me i i've been like all over the place with spider and i couldn't figure out why i couldn't move things around and i was like oh well that makes sense then because i was stacking just by numbers ah yeah yeah that'll mess you up in in, in a multi-suit game like badly very badly um I don't know, I can get rid of that too. Uh, yay, okay, good. You want to make sure most of the time that you have, you are within, like obviously at the beginning you can't do this, but um, the further into a game you get, you want to make sure you have as many open slots as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have the opportunity to make one, keep it open as long as you can. Uh, use it to experiment, like I want to know what's underneath this eight. Sweet, there's a five there, I need that. Uh, three, I can't really get rid of that. And I want that spot back. So even though I got some progress, I'm going to undo it, move something else there. Okay. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 a flexible tableau, and 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 the more the closer you are to having one or more empty slots, the closer you are to solving it just flat out. Right. Um, like I may have to just oh oh, and don't be afraid to actually just hit the button and pull up the next suit. It's not. You can always undo it, and uh, it often will give you options you didn't have already. Um, it is very intimidating. You feel like you're not supposed to do that, like that's you know, like kind of giving up. But it is actually possible in this game to get to a point where you physically cannot fill all the slots along here, and you can't hit this button unless you have a card in each of these slots. Oh, okay. So all ten slots have to have a card in them. So if you end up solving stuff to where you only have eight cards left, and you have more cards down here in the corner that you need to get rid of, you can't do it. You have to undo back until you had some stuff to put on there. Okay. So uh, not being afraid to, to throw cards onto the table is, is very helpful, too. Um, one second, let me figure out what I'm going to do next here. Yeah, like this. <laughs> I guess it gives me some stuff to get rid of these and... Good place to put that jack. And BitLocker, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> we got big lo bit lockered. All right. One, <laughs> one, one second, guys. One oh, wait, second. wait, no, no. There's a. Oh, I can't close it. Okay, one second. We'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, so we kind of figured out a little workaround. We just moved it to the bottom. Yeah, and pay no attention to the white bar across the bottom. Exactly. Screen. But he, he can still play. So, so anyway. Back to our regularly scheduled program of solitaire daily challenges with on spider. The spider challenge. So, yeah, where were we? Um... So you're well, talking about how you don't want to leave this. You want as many open spaces as possible yeah. to work your what you're doing, but you can't hit the deck button. <laughs> hit the deck uh, if you have open spaces. Correct. Like yeah. If if uh, and I'll try to engineer that in here in a second. Right, here we go. Um, it actually won't work because there has to be a card, to be a in, card every in that slot. slot. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So. Awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, the, <laughs> there's a lot of time that's gone by. <laughs> so, yes, I'm glad it's not a time challenge. Um, technical difficulties. So, 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 so. All right. S getting getting the uh, getting the wrong card stacked in the wrong order of the same suit is sometimes even deadlier than to 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 your success rate. Right. Than um, than having you know this mixed pile here that you can at least see. Right, because I can't see that. I didn't even notice that these were in the wrong order. And sometimes I'll like think I have a, I'll think I have a good stack yeah. going that I built up, and I'll try to move it. I'm like, oh crap. Right. So. And you can't like you legit just cannot move if it's not the right suit stacked in the right yeah, order. Yeah, yeah, check it out. I'm, I can't. It, it just it shows you what's underneath it. Even if you have an empty spot, you can't. Even if you have an empty spot, can't. Yeah, you can only move the 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 cards of the same same suit that are stacked mm -hmm. in the right order. Right. Um. Like you saw, I couldn't move the, I can't move this either. Yeah, so. that, that explains why I was having so much <laughs> trouble that would with explain the spider. It, yes. <laughs> I was like, why is this not moving? I don't like this. So, you know, once, once you get it clear though, it pops right up and... So this specific daily challenge is to solve the deck. Yeah, it's not, it's not a terribly uh, imaginative goal. It's, 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 it's what you always do. Uh, it just happens to be one that, um, that, that we know we can solve because I, I solved it. Um, right. That is the the nice the, the no, not the nice thing, but it's one of the nice things about data challenges is that um, you know most of the time when you go and try to play a two suit spider uh, game, there's a pretty good significant chance you can't solve it. Um, it's I mean it's amazingly it's am in incredibly complex in terms of the number of possibilities, mm -hmm. but uh, there are a lot that are just flat out unsolvable, especially when you go to four suit. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <coughs> um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Uh, sometimes you can't solve them. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can't solve them. Daily challenges are always solved. Um, I make them by playing the game, discovering a game state that I like, and saying, "Okay, this is a challenge." So I actually have to play every single one of these first um, to make sure to that make they sure. are yeah. solvable. Exactly. Um, so if Ethan can do it, you can do it, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sure some people who bang their head against some of my four suit spider challenges uh, would disagree with that, but there's been many a time that I wanted to text you in, in anger because I couldn't figure out, especially mahjong sometimes. I'm like, no. Some of my most gratifying feedback on these has been the uh, growling and cursing variety that I get occasionally when I you when do. I stump somebody on well, their yeah, favorite game. Yeah, I mean, they're they're called daily challenges for a reason, you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we're not here to make you try to do something that's impossible. They're all doable, you just gotta find the right particular method. Now for the difference between easy and expert is, sure. are they ranked that way because of the variations of being able to solve it? So like, does easy have 10 different ways you can solve it versus expert might only have one or two? Uh, sometimes it's the opposite actually, uh, especially when you get into a game like Pyramid or Tri-Peaks. Um, there are a lot of, uh, <laughs> yes, I did. That was me. I, uh, I didn't, I didn't know what that's. Ryzen, <laughs> currently, no, we do not have, um, MLG mode in solitaire, but, um, m maybe soon, maybe soon. MLG is major league gaming. Ah, okay. Yeah. I, I'm in a little dark box where I make challenges all day, so I don't, <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't see much outside there, that yeah. little world. Um, for a second, I thought you were trolling, you know, so that's why I didn't answer, but, yeah. I, uh, yes, I do, Corey. That's exactly why I do it, um, just to drive you nuts. <laughs> They're hard to create. I mean, it takes, 
I only I only put them in there when I happen to find them. Um, there's a lot of two suit uh, deals that end up being just as difficult, and uh, those are the ones that I end up settling on as experts. Um, but as uh, when you asked if there's a specific uh, if there's a specific like solution count, oftentimes the ones that have the most ways to solve it are tougher because you have to, like, in, in Pyramid of Tri-Peaks, because there's also, the more ways there are to solve it, the more ways there are to get screwed up. Right. Um, My with, with a, when there's only one way to solve a Tri-Peaks game, it just leads you down it and it's really super easy. Right. Um, but, you know, to the contrary, when you're playing one of these, uh, if there's only one solution, sometimes you got to dig it up. So right. it really depends on the game. Um, there's, not a, there's not a particular mathematics that go, in terms of... Uh, Number of solutions and things like that that goes into determining the difficulty. It's it's really it's uh, whether I and our illustrious test team um, it has a hard time completing had aneurysms on it or not. <laughs> or, <laughs> I have internal parameters that I use. Like I make sure that when I'm making a challenge for you know uh, for Klondike, an easy challenge. If I look up at the clock while I'm making it and it's taken me more than a minute and a half, it's not an easy challenge, right? Okay, um, yeah, that makes so sense. I, I tend to make those. Like, they took me under a minute and a half, but more than, like, you know, a minute, because you don't want something to be too easy because then people are bored with it. Right. Um, and that's that's a good, solid, easy challenge. As long, and also, as long as there's no special tricks or, uh, like, complicated maneuvers um, where you're, like, <laughs> you move one over and you move one over on top of that and move the other one over. Right, um, right. <laughs> sorry, reason. <laughs> Is it because I'm not speaking clearly, or because I'm speaking in jargon? No, he he doesn't understand your lingo. Oh, okay. Of of solitaire is a very complex game, and Ethan here makes all of our daily challenges. So he's talking about how he ranks them from easy all the way up to expert, and and how they come up with those different ranks. Um, so when you go in and you try to do a challenge, I always pick the easy ones first because I want to get them over with and then I'll move on to the expert. So that's what he was talking about. I was asking him how he figures out what's easy and then what is considered expert. And we are playing one of the daily challenges and it's spider, is this expert? Uh, yeah, this is an expert. This, this is, is an expert. an expert spider challenge. And, and don't, don't, uh, don't anybody think that I have an advantage because I made it. Um, that is absolutely 100% not the case. Uh, you mean you don't remember every single puzzle? No, no. That, that I get asked that a lot. Like, oh, well, of course you can beat it. You made it. I'm like, yeah, but I also made, you know, 78 other ones between now and then. Right. And I really don't remember what that first one was. Right. So that's that's one of the reasons that we use the test team <laughs> to, to help us, help advise us as to whether something is, is too difficult or not because they haven't seen it. So it's like having a fresh set of eyes go over your work. Right. So what's going on with that? Is that another trash pile that you have there? That really long one? That's all. Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, it's not really technically a trash oh, pile. It's it kind just of in got chunks. compacted. Yeah. yeah, it's like okay. three stacks. That, well, two stacks are on top of a trash pile. Um, and uh, and yeah, I know. You I'm, suck at solitaire. It's okay. So do I. So <laughs> do I. It's really bad. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a reason I'm not playing pyramid. All right. I'm, just <laughs> I'm very not good at that game. Uh, by comparison. Okay, hold on, I should be able to make something here. Is that an eight? Yeah, all right, so let me just get rid of these. Get something out of the way. So to get them out of the way, you have to have king all the way down to ace the of back. the same Boom. suit. All the way down to ace. And it'll and automatically right push it to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Indeed. What do I want to do next? I want to... Now question, say you've got all these stacks up at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And then you, you end up having all these open slots. Is that a way you can lose as well because you can't click the deck thing if you have uh, open? Yeah, I mean, you don't so much lose as you just don't have anything left to do. Well, well, you can you undo solve. back. Yeah, you can undo back to that point and, oh, okay. uh, and then redistribute some stuff, hit the button, and then go back again. Because as you see, I'm pretty close to the bottom of the deck. Right. <laughs> is my favorite. Oh, hey, I, I, more power to you. He's being so oh, he's being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, I get it now. There's a solitaire map for Minecraft. I did not know that. I might blame Helen, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that something, sounds like something she, she would do. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. No, that's really cool, though. I'll I have to check that out. A corner. All right, so I'm out of extra cards. I might have just screwed myself. Uh-oh. Uh, no, no, I got to open one. 
As long as I've got one open, I should be able to beat it. I've it's been weird. distracted, so I didn't get far, as far down into these decks as I uh, normally would before I cave. And It's all right. It usually um, takes longer when you are live streaming while you're playing a game because, especially a stream like this where we're explaining stuff, um, <laughs> you know, it always takes you yeah. longer. And then sometimes, like, when I would stream stuff um, like this, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, where was I at? And I, I you know, because you get so in the zone. Oh, totally. Yeah. Of where you've put things and, and how what your plan is. You have to think so many steps ahead. Um, and when you're chatting about it or trying to explain it, you kind of lose that a little. That was close. I almost got stuck. Uh-oh. Yay. Yay! All right, there's one. Nope, not quite. I gotta get the rest of that, but... Um, uh, yes! Now. Ryzen Solitaire is the next major esports. Confirmed. It's happening. <laughs> yep. Every time, every time I hear someone say that, all I can think of is the Jimmy Fallon commercial. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, I Thanks, love that. Thanks, Jimmy. Yep. That was hilarious. Uh, that I was, could not stop laughing. It was, yeah, I mean, I, I watched his show on, on Hulu a lot, and, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was hilarious. He, <laughs> he called us out, of, you know, called us out out of nowhere. Uh a Alex, lot of people are like, oh, he must have paid. He must have. They, he, they must have paid him to do that. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Alex, did you just link that? Is that the commercial? <laughs> I think that is. It's got to be it. That is fantastic. And yeah, we had nothing to do with that. That was all him. <laughs> yeah, because wasn't it like an internal thing that yeah. got put? Like other people started finding out about it. Well, no. What, what is we we uh, did we we were doing an internal tournament. It at down in the in, on, on campus right. for uh, to find out who's the best soldier player at Microsoft. Um, you know the people who could come play. Right. And uh, that got misconstrued in the press as an international online tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and and it hit the press. It actually like yeah. hit news sources well, yeah, and they mentioned the it. Time. Yeah. Com, yeah. And then uh, and then. Jimmy Fallon decided to make fun of it because it sounds pretty funny when you just say it, you know. Yes, an international <laughs> solitaire tournament. <laughs> Serious business. Serious totally. business. High stakes. Yep. Okay. Can't get too cocky here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Pro status right here. Yeah. <laughs> that ace though. <laughs> that ace though. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so as you can see, um, he solved it. It says challenge complete. And when you collect your reward, you get coins. Except, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. And then all the fancy coins go in the bottom. Now, if you complete all of the daily challenges for that day, then you get extra bonus coins, which helps you kind of rank up faster with these badges. Cool. So do you want me to play all of them today? No, you don't have to. You can pick a different one if you'd like, or maybe try... Uh, no, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. Yeah. Um, do you like Tri Peaks? Sure. I'm gonna find a, Wait, a, which a, is the math one? That's pyramid. That's okay, that's the yeah. That's why Corey was being <laughs> sarcastic because I'm like, gosh, I just don't want to add to thirteen. But after you after you play it for a little while, then it's you just remember the mm -hmm. code the card combinations. So you, when I start, I'm like this: eight, nine, 10, <laughs> oh, 12, no. thirteen. So I need eight and five. Yeah, that, that's rough. That's rough. And then uh, <laughs> king is good, ace, uh, queen, and you know, so you kind of have to. They have to add up to thirteen. Yeah. So yeah, um, but once I play a couple of them, starting the people might not know then, what we're talking about. So then I kind of get into it. Like I can remember what what cards need to go together. So, um, but Tri Peaks I like. I love Tri Peaks. Tri Peaks great. I'm gonna I, play I that all day, every day. Do you guys have a favorite 
way to play? Like, which one's yours? Klondike, which is pretty much your classic... Classic solitaire. Yeah. Solitaire, yeah. Spider and Free Cell and Pyramid and Tri-Peaks. So if anyone has a favorite, let us know in the chat. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep playing stuff over here. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just going to go for it. So, yeah, we did Spider, so let's try something else. Oh. Uh, yeah, ironically enough, I rarely actually get a chance to play these because I make them first, and then... They go through a testing process where people confirm that I'm not completely full of it. Yeah, and, uh, I think we should make uh, Ethan play all on expert. All you want me to find an expert for each one? <laughs> all right, all right, fine. That that pyramid one's gonna take me the rest there? of the live stream. Yeah, oh, here's a Klondike. One. Oh, do that one. Yeah. Let's see what that one is. Klondike and Spider are my favorites. Damn, I'm hungry again. Yeah, you got Klondike. You got your wish. Yay. <laughs> If you guys are just tuning in, this is Ethan. He makes all those daily challenges that you guys are just like, ah! Um, and he's showing us some little tips, kind of like how to play certain game types um, if you want to learn. If you guys have any questions, type them in the chat. We're here till, uh, that is Jay. We are here okay. till 1.30, so we have about 23 minutes left. So get those questions in while you can okay. before yeah. Ethan runs Assuming off that I to go eat lunch. Such. All right, so this one is solve the deck. Yeah, and it's a three. I don't. I don't know how many of you guys actually play uh, Klondike on um, three card deal mode or not, uh, but that's generally what I, I. I generally only do that to people on a on an expert. Sometimes a hard if I'm feeling just you know, mean. No, I'm kidding. If I find one that's actually pretty easy, then I'll do it because it's really intimidating. I mean, you know, it's Ethan so mean. <laughs> Sometimes. Here, I brought, bit, you know, I brought candy. <laughs> That's okay, I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Um, but uh, anyway, you know, a three suit can be a real bear, and a lot of people hate them. And, uh, <clears throat> but that is what makes it pretty tough. But isn't um, that like the original? Like, yeah. I was always, it's three flip, three flip. Mm -hmm. That's, and, and then I would cheat. I'd be like, oh, I, I know that ace is there. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. With real cards, I think we all cheated a hell of a lot when we played yeah. solitaire. Um, yeah, I know I did. Um, but, <coughs> but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it's three is a little harder. Is what three, you're is, three is a lot tougher, actually, because it's it actually changes the entire way the game plays, um, because it, it it sort of reshuffles all the priorities of what you're going to be doing if you want to beat the board. So, right. uh, in regular single deal, what's up there in the cards up here? doesn't really matter. You don't have to bring anything down because you can always go back and get it again. Right. Right. Those cards become way more important when you can only get to one out of three of them. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that becomes way more important um, in, in a three, three deal situation. And these, the, the stacks down here uh, actually also become more important because now if you, like this, moving something down from here Something from the uh, from the deal pile is it changes the rotation? Yeah, it changes, yeah, it changes, yeah because of all the it changes all the cards after that. So generally, one of the first things I do is go through the deck once just to see what's there. Yep. Uh, oh, cool. I'm gonna have an ace there. Another ace when I get through that again. So I make sure I don't miss some stuff. Um, see, the 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 version of this I was used to, you only had three times to go through the deck. Yes. Which is super evil. Yes. Uh, that was very evil. I remember that. Yeah, it was. Pretty um, mean. What's whose Xbox name? Dakota. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, I go through again. I know there's an ace down there I'm going to want, so I'm going to be pretty... I'm, I'm going to leave the front alone until I get down to that ace. Toss it up. See what comes after that. And then once you put some even one thing up on the uh, the foundation or down to the down to the cards down here, you really got to, like, consider, all right, what do I want to do next? <laughs> right. You know, because it, you, you this is the last time you're going to see any of these cards for a while. Right. Like, I've already actually committed a cardinal sin of not <laughs> taking care of the stuff that's on the mm -hmm. on the tableau before I start running through the deck, but... Um, well, you got the 9876. Yeah. Five. Uh, and, yeah, and the 10 to the jack. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Like, I may or may not want to do this. Like, this is, an right. un this, is, this is something that's undoable right here. You can do it to find out what's underneath it. You know that one's blank. Do you really need to use a king or not? I often leave these there and save that decision for a point at which I actually need to make it. Um, like, I kind of want this three. Mm -hmm. 
the last card you never need to take because it's always going to be there. You only need to take it if you want something underneath it. Um, you can always go back and get it easily. Right. Because uh, the no, last card is always the eight. last card. Yeah. But I should have done that. You know why? Because that eight. It gives me another ace. Has somewhere to live. So now I've gotten rid of two, so it's going to totally screw everything up. down there I want. Uh, don't need it yet. Ethan, can you add Minecraft Easter eggs into Solitaire? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I actually can't even think of a way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like random cards have Minecraft pictures on them. That'd be funny. That would be pretty funny. I'll let you decide that one. Um, did I? All right, so I'm gonna get a king out of the way here just to a creeper power up. That's funny. A creeper. It's funny. These it's it's way more special doing this in front of people. <laughs> it's just doing it. Because <laughs> when I play through most of the time, if I don't immediately like figure out how I'm going to solve it, I just over. skip and start over again. Yeah. The number of failures on my account on, on my the, uh, on the of the version oh, of the plan yeah. I used to make the game is absurd. Because even when I finish one, it doesn't count. So I had and it, you know, I switch to a new one. It says this will count as a failure in your stats. Right. Yeah. So I have like a million failures or something stupid like that. That is some doing that, like taking a taking a card off of something, getting rid of it, and then taking the other cards back up to cover up what you just took down mm -hmm. is uh, something that uh, the one of our uh, one of our associates at Arcadium calls sideways motion oh. of cards. Um, that is something that a lot of people just don't do, like when you think of moving the cards that way. Right. But it's almost always required in a in a a deal three, or pretty much any kind of any expert level challenge is going to require you to do that kind of stuff. Okay, good. There's something. And also be careful of taking getting greedy. Like if you don't really need this card out, and you've just taken another one, you might not want to do it because it's going to affect that thing down the uh, the the rest of the cards. Right. This is towards the end of the deck, so it's not that important. Um, it's actually going to probably going to be more important for me to get that out of the way. Mm, still don't know whether I'm going to be able to solve this or not. Because I don't have any red queens available. Oh, I can just always bring this. In. This is another one. Uh, bringing anything off of the foundation yeah, and I back on. Lot. A lot of people don't. They don't really? think of doing that either. They figure like because in free cell you yeah, can't. Sure, Jack. Once you have once you have something up into the foundation in free cell, you can never get it again. Right. No, um, that's true. So if you come from free cell and are playing this, then you know <laughs> they're having language competition in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, once you once you've once you put something up on the foundation, a lot of people don't even realize that you can move it, much less that you would want to for any reason. Right. Um, I still can't find that other bloody ace. Oh, there it is. I, I can't get to it. I mean. Come on, hold together. <laughs> Alex. What's he Wait, what? You can get cards out of the foundation? <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> Smart horse. <laughs> if you say it's scotch, it's not a curse, right? Right. Totally. <laughs> hew, hew, hew. Oh, there we go. Yay. Hello. Oh. Not enough yet, though. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Come on. Doesn't help me to put that over there. I don't have a king to put on it. Yep, and these are just really easy to totally screw yourself from one card. 
Oh, no, he was being serious. Huh? He said he didn't know you could do that. Oh, seriously? Haha, -ha, see? Oops. Not everybody knows. Yep. But yes, I can take this down if I want to get at... Uh, I can put all this stuff back. If I have a reason to. Like it's going to help me now. <laughs> uh, Corey, that won't work because you typed it in chat and we can both see it, so... Uh, be prepared in case <laughs> someone tries to open the door here to scare us. Corey. Cheers, Dakota. Uh, yeah, so I have bungled this one. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat it. Really? Yeah. I, I don't Got have anywhere to put that jack. Dang jack. I did one too many moves when I shouldn't have, and that's why. The farthest I can get up the chain here is uh, I, I is only this far because... Yep, nothing else I can do with it. Uh, I wouldn't be able to get front of it because five's in one of these, one of those right. three cards, right? Yeah. Yep. We're armed. Ha <laughs> ha. We have self-defense weapons. We have bullets too. We have. We have. Oh, we have more. one. I shot one behind. Oh no, you've got three. See? We got the bullet. You do not want to start a war a nerf We're war armed with me, and my dangerous. friend. I, I have armament in my in my office, <laughs> and I will bring in my nerf bazookas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, like, the 50 three cal of them. one? <laughs> There's, like, the 50 cal one. Oh, that's that awesome, just... yeah. The, the machine gun one or the sniper rifle? Uh, the machine gun one. It's pretty cool. I just, I want to, like, set that up with a trick wire in the hallway, so that way, if any of my kids get out of bed, that it just automatically starts firing at them. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that is a great way to wake up your kids, although I'm sure they would object. <laughs> They're always getting out of bed. It's crazy. Uh, nerf. I, I was not introduced to Nerf until I started working in the game industry. <laughs> until really? I never had a Nerf gun yet. My first Nerf gun was a Whiskers. <laughs> I think it was a little, one of those little tiny Nerf crossbows that was like this big uh -huh. and it was a little hand crossbow thing. And I don't even know if it was a Nerf. But yeah, dart guns. Yes, Corey, I think he did. Think it did what? Instigated a Nerf war. Oh, dude, I'm warning you. Hey, I, this is this is a friendly <laughs> warning. As a friend, if you need any tips, I'm military trained. I got gotcha. you. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if you want to do that. He's military trained too. That's the problem. Mm. <sighs> great. I'm gonna have to break out the Nerf bazooka. I have three of them. They're great. <laughs> they're, they're those darts that are like this big. It's they're Nerf hilarious. or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite story about working with kids was that one day the power went out, and without any kind of pre-planning or any kind of verbal communication, everyone just immediately reached for their Nerf guns and started a Nerf I, war. Wow, that's Office-wide. It was a big office. I mean, it was like an entire floor of a building. And yeah, there was no, there was no question. That was exactly what you do when the power goes up. Yeah, yeah. Pax Nerf weaponry for Monday. <sighs> yeah. It's your, it's your funeral, man. <laughs> it's your Nerf funeral. <laughs> oh, goodness. Like, I just envision you coming to work on Monday, like, just fully... <laughs> Full metal jacket it out? Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, all right, you know, I'm going to give it Packing one. all the heat for with the Nerf guns. Right, let's, let's start over at the beginning. Okay. For those of you who don't know of the shortcut, there is a keyboard shortcut for undo. Control-Z, just like in Photoshop or anywhere else. I use it a lot. I have heard of the battles at Wizards. Well, Maybe. I'm just going to have to go buy a Nerf gun now. Never a bad idea. Never a bad idea. All right, so this time I'm actually going to... And a holster, so I will always be packing. Holster, how adorable. It'll be pink. I've never seen a holster that actually works. <laughs> a pink holster for my Nerf gun. And you have a helmet, so... Yes, I have protection. I'm good to go. Oh, you know what? In honor of the Hunger Games coming out last night, I went and saw that. I'm gonna get a nerf cro uh, a nerf bow. A nerf bow. That's yep. That's what I'm getting. I'm gonna Katniss Everdeen it up in the hallway. You do get style points for doing that, by the way. Yeah. Not necessarily practicality points, but style points. And in the end, isn't that what's important? It is really, truly is. So we have started over on this <laughs> one. Because, because I'm stubborn. I, I kept interrupting Ethan, so he couldn't like fully concentrate on solving. This, this is, is a live stream. I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it's an expert Klondike, and the challenge is to actually solve the whole. The is whole it, did deck. I do another? One? Is this another solve? Is another solve the deck? Yeah. We should find one that's just that's that's like you know, 
get this card to the foundation right. or, or whatever. Because there are a lot more <laughs> daily challenges than, than just solving, solving the deck. Yeah. Um, I kept collecting all the bullets that sounds like somebody needs to go to Fred Meyer. Next thing you know, Microsoft. <laughs> 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 oh, Nerf Hunger Games. Ah, oh, that'd be great. Thinking of rule set right now, I'll get back to you on that. Yes. We have a few soccer fields. Here. We do. We have a soccer pitch. Yep. Football football pitch. Uh, I already screwed it up. Ah. Uh. Alright, you know what? In the interest of showing more interesting challenges than this, I will end my current game. Give up. And go to a different one. Alright. Now, one thing about daily challenges is, as the days in the month progress, they start unlocking. Mm -hmm. But once that month is over, you can't go back. Nope. So, if you are planning on doing daily challenges, make sure that you do get them completed before the end of the month. Because, yeah. No grace period, no nothing. No. Cut off. That's why, I last month. that's why I never put expert challenges in, on the last day of the month. <laughs> that was one of the funny. When I first started the job, one of my friends who played daily challenges, uh, the first thing he said to me is, never put <laughs> an expert <laughs> challenge on the last day of the month. Don't do it. Apparently it had happened before. He was not happy. Okay, so this is play two sixes. Yeah. So this to is the foundation. This is not going to involve me beating the board. Um Ironically, like 99.9% .9 of all free cell boards are, so all, all free cell deals are solvable, but they're just really freaking hard. Right. Um, but uh, we do these in all of the games um, to make a different goal that is not just what you do all the time when you're playing, just solving the deck. Mm -hmm. This is like, you know, as this one is, it's getting two sixes to the foundation, so I'm only trying to get a couple of sixes. Um, so this is a case where like, I got it to that level, and couldn't get it any further, <laughs> and I got it in, in, in a reasonable amount of time, so that was what I saved out as this challenge. Right, okay. Um, so let's see here, I'm looking for sixes, right? Mm -hmm. So where are my aces at? Uh, for those of you who desire any free sell tips or, or anything, um, you have this is one of the games where you have everything out on the board already. You can see every single card you're gonna have to play with and where it is. So you can kind of plan out before you hit that first card what you're gonna do. So you're looking for where the aces are, uh, in this case, I got two that are near the top, and then two that are in this one particular column. So I'll, I'll get those unburied, and then I'll focus on this column so I can have them all. A wise quote. He's asking Corey. Ah. Are they still trading linguistic? Uh, I don't know. They might be. I feel so <laughs> left out. I'm like, I know one. English, that is it. I really wish I knew more languages than I do, but I don't. I'm learning German. That's All right, a slow one process. down. I'm thinking maybe I'm I'm gonna learn like a Japanese or Mandarin, something that someone doesn't already speak in my team. <laughs> oh, these are trying to be useful. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the languages I took were Latin and ancient Greek. Really? In, in high school and college. Those are Latin and are they? Greek. Valuable now. <laughs> they're actually they're very useful. They're the root languages of just about every romance language out there. So, yeah. Um, My sister took Latin. And I mean, I, I'm very good at. It. I can look at a lot of different romance languages and kind of like a like written language and have a good chance of figuring out the gist. Right. I don't always have the vocabulary, but for the stuff that is shared or that does root down to uh, a Greek or Latin root, I have a much easier time with it. Um, one of the first things I ended up working on when I uh, first started in the game industry was laying yes, out... Yes, I speak pig Latin, Corey. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. Uh, was laying <laughs> out a rule sheet that was in seven different languages. So I had a huge column of text that was the same That was the same text. It was just in English, Swedish, German, Dutch, uh, French, Portuguese, and Italian. Is that, that might be more time. Anyway, there's a bunch of different languages. Um, and so I had to lay them out and make sure it was lining up correctly, so I had to read them all. Um, and I discovered that I actually could decipher a lot of it, even though I didn't speak any of those languages particularly. Well, that's kind of... At all. That's kind of <laughs> cool. So yeah, it, when yeah. somebody says, oh, what's Greek and Latin useful for? I'm like, well, that helped a lot with that. Right. Um, all right. Oh, good. 
is highlighting the sixes for me. That's handy. Yes, I like that it does that. It is nice. Because sometimes I'll be looking away from the screen when it tells me what, what my purpose is here. And, <laughs> and then I'm not looking what at the, the bottom. Meaning? And I'm like, why are the... Like I, I seriously, I'd be like, oh, the sixes are highlighted, and then it makes me, you know, do that call to action. Oh yeah, and playing that game. Yes, like oh, I need to just put sixes up there. But on the way, you have to get all those fours and the fives and all that stuff. So we got one. One. So which of these two lucky? Suits is going to be the next one I go after. Hearts. Hearts. No. Is, well, I don't have the well, two. The two of hearts is way buried in yeah, the corner. Yeah, so it's a three and four. The three of diamonds is buried in the corner. Where's the three of clubs? Oh, they're all in the corner. Yep. All right, all right. So this is going to be... i got to pay more attention to this. Uh, hmm. Unburying them is a good first step. This is a case where I would love to bring down that six, but I already put it up there like an idiot. Right. So maybe I should undo oops. Undo that. Okay. You can order apple juice in Spanish. <laughs> Donde esta la biblioteca? I know two phrases in Spanish. I'm pretty sure I got both of them from a Brendan Fraser movie. Yeah. I can't be proud of that. Oh, come on. That movie is, like, classic. It's a remake of a classic. Yeah, but it's <laughs> It is not classic <laughs> in and of itself. As funny as it is, it is not classic in and of itself. <laughs> I've seen that movie so many times. Like, yep. Embarrassingly, too many times? In, like, I can't even tell you because... <laughs> Yeah, I could literally just... We could have a whole dialogue from the movie. <laughs> ah, see? Yay! I, 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 I screwed myself. Oh, no. No, this is this is a failure screen. Boo! <laughs> so I'll do the last minute. I, I, locked, I locked up the board. <laughs> it likes to, to give you crap when you lock up the board. Um, so for those of you just joining us, we're <laughs> the Daily Challenge designer is proving he's lousy at Daily Challenge. Nah. I just worked myself into a corner. Well, we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. So, <laughs> you don't you have... You get the gist. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else that... You like Tri-Peaks? I'll play some Tri-Peaks while you Tri-Peaks? Yeah, all right. So, he's going to play Tri-Peaks while I close it out. Sure, sure. Boom. Um, so, thank you guys for joining us in two weeks, which is... Hold on, i got to look at my calendar. Which would be the fourth of December, we're going to be doing the casual games again with a different guest. And so Secret thank you guys guest. for coming. If you guys have any questions later or anything, you can tweet at us. We have our social information on stream right up there. Right there. You can Facebook us, leave comments on YouTube, or tweet at us and let us know. And thank you guys for watching. Say bye, Ethan. Bye, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs>